my channel it's been a long 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 long, long time um but i hope all of my subscribers are well and even if you're just stopping by at the channel welcome um i'm kemi i'm a first going second year medical student at king's college london and yeah so i thought since it's coming around to interview season i could give you guys some tips and tricks on how to perform best of your interviews and ace them overall i'll talk a bit about my interview journey so I had um, three interviews. One of them was at King's College London. The other was at Sheffield University. And then my final interview was at Leicester University. Now, all of these interviews were really, really, really different. So I'm just gonna give you guys some tips I wish I knew before I started mine. It's hard to know what to expect. But there are a couple of subject, subject areas that universities tend to touch on in medical interviews and just healthcare interviews in general, because I also had an interview at UCL for pharmacy. Right, so interviews. Interviews serve three main purposes. The main purpose is to gauge your personality. Would this person sitting in front of us make a good doctor? Because medical school can teach you academic um, things. And, you know, A levels are highly exam, exam, exam. But these don't really give any indication as to how good you are at talking to people, and how you handle awkward situations, and maybe your sensitivity, your bedside manner, and all these other um, factors that make a good doctor. Being a doctor is not, it's a career that's very, well, it's clinical. You're going to be face to face with patients. You're not going to be typing on a computer. You know, you're not going to be in the lab. You're going to be in contact with patients, which is the whole purpose of interviews. In some ways, they kind of are to test your knowledge at the same time, but it's more your knowledge on things that won't be tested in your UCAT or um, BMAT or in your A-level exam. So I'm not talking science content and things like that. Although maths can come into it, I'll go into that. It's more to do with what do you know about the NHS? What do you know about your career that you're going into? How much research have you done? And how will you handle this situation? And that's what I want to see. So firstly, we're going to go into the different types of interviews that there are. So there are two main types of interviews, the MMIs and the panel interviews. So I did my interviews in 2018 and 19, and all of my interviews were MMI. MMI stands for multiple mini interviews. That's the format that most medical schools will prefer to take. I've heard recently that they might be switching to panel just because of um, coronavirus. But when I was doing my interviews and from what I know, to my knowledge, that is the form that medical schools tend to prefer. So multiple mini interviews, how they work are, you'll have, for example, seven different stations. You start at station one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven, and so on. And then you'll talk to someone um, at that station for maybe 10, 15 minutes, and then you'll rotate. And that person that you've been talking to will score you, usually out of five. And then all of those scores are added together at the end and you get your final interview score. I think you might be able to email them, but generally they don't really give you your final interview score. But yeah, that's kind of how it is. Panel interviews, on the other hand, it will be you in front of, in front of um, say, for example, five or six individuals. Maybe one will be a doctor, maybe one will be a lecturer, maybe one will be a biochemistry, um, could even be a student, to be honest. And you'll be sat in front of them and then you will basically be asked a bunch of questions and they will like discuss i think and like score you personally i think mmis are the better way and most medical schools also agree because it's a way to get a really unbiased approach to the student for example you can go on one station absolutely flop it obviously to try not to do that and then go to the next station and they'll have no idea that you flopped <laughs> I have no idea that you flopped the last station so it really gives you time to like and you'll have like two to three minutes between stations so that's your time to recollect slap yourself across the face don't literally do that or they might think there's something wrong with you and breathe we go again so uh, let me also mention a little bit of background about how you get to an interview to put it quite simply this depends on the uni but in general there are a couple of things that they can use to pick who will get an interview and who will not and that is the information that we have already. One, GCSEs. Usually they're scored, A star is the highest score, for example, let's say three points. A will be two points, B will be like one point, and so on and so on. They can also use 
To be honest, unis don't really tend to look too much at predicted grades because they can be really inaccurate. But the biggest thing that they tend to use is your UCAT score. So make sure you guys are doing as well as you can. I'll also have a video on how to make it for your UCAT and what I did that helped me um, because I'm a very slow learner. <laughs> I'm a slow learner. So it's okay guys, we'll do it together. You'll be fine. And now on to my tips. Just so you guys are clear, this video is going to be about um, MMIs simply because I have never done a panel interview before. Um, never experienced it, so I'll speak on what I can speak on. However, there should it shouldn't be too like different. The questions asked will be similar. So yeah, guys, as I said, MMIs can vary greatly, but there tend to be a few things that they're usually testing for, or like kind of themes of each station, and the themes are. Role play stations, professional judgment stations, prioritization stations, stations where they'll give you instructions, calculation and data interpretation. This is why I mentioned maths as it can happen and chemistry. And finally, PBL or problem-based learning stations, which is something you'll do a lot of in medical school. So let me go into each of these. Cool, so first of all, role play stations. Role play stations, uh, well, it's what it says on the box. What will tend to happen is they'll meet at a station or maybe you'll have a little card in front and it'll say, you are a doctor, you're speaking to maybe a patient called Harry, he's 85, he's not too sure about taking his medication. And yeah, basically just have a discussion with him and try and comfort him. At that point, the person or the staff at the station will begin. So you will literally be acting as a medical student, usually, or a doctor and basically have to converse with them. This is, in my opinion, one of the, well, depending on the type of person you are, it can either be the easiest or the hardest. This is a station that literally is testing conversational skills, empathy, and it's not really knowledge-based. That's why I say it's one of the easier stations. One of the tips I would give for this station, know your audience. If you're speaking to an elderly man, don't speak really quickly and don't use really technical terminology like cool if you have a lot of knowledge already like well done for researching and you'll surely be able to show them in other stations but if you're speaking to an elderly man a child um just a patient in general i would not really recommend and it wouldn't really look too well on you using you know like medical like terminology and boulder dash and stuff because it's difficult for them to understand your job as a doctor when it comes to talking to patients isn't to show off how much knowledge you have it's for you to pass on this information as clearly and concisely as possible and also if you're if you don't know something don't like make stuff up obviously it's nice to know if you're unsure and a patient asks you oh i'm not too sure about that i'll just check that up with um my senior consultant do you know what i mean just show that you are going to follow that up for them and get them an answer don't pretend like you know something when you don't because it will show you. and that is not something that medical schools will be looking out for you know, as a doctor, an important skill is to be able to admit and put your hands up and say, I'm not sure. Because pretending to know is going to get a patient in trouble. I can't really be freestyling when it's somebody else's health, do you know what I mean? Keep in mind, you may not always get a medical role play station. So you could be acting or whatever you want to call it. And it could be you're talking to someone on your hockey team that's been feeling really down lately and being really quiet you haven't seen him around lately apart from at games and you want to find out what's wrong so basically yeah they're mainly testing your empathy communication interpersonal skills so to practice for this station i would literally recommend talking to yourself or just watching as many videos as you can practicing with family and friends just as much talking as possible it's it's a weird skill but you have to be able to like make small talk and I know it's like, mm, I'm awkward because I'm also an awkward person, but there's something that you just have to do. Stop feeling nervous. Like, honestly, just fake it till you make it. And most patients are really nice. Most of them are really nice. So yeah, don't stress too much. Collect yourself. Don't speak too fast. I'm guilty of that when I'm nervous. I speak really fast. And if it's a um, patient or like clinical setting for the role play, speak as clearly and concisely as you can. And a little tip always check for understanding do you understand or how do you feel about that do you know what i mean show the patient that like you care use skills like active listening body language you know don't be like looking at the sky 
I'm wondering how long you have left on the stick. Like, don't do that because it's rude. If you were a patient and you were talking to a doctor and the doctor's there, you know, looking at their nails, it wouldn't feel very nice. Um, another tip that I would give, read the scenario carefully, okay? If the scenario card says you are a medical student, act as a medical student, okay? They say, I'm going to prescribe you, this, because medical students don't prescribe, you don't do that, you're a student, not a qualified doctor. If the scenario says you are to find out what is wrong with this patient, you are to address this patient's concerns, or, you know, um, you're trying to convince them to like read what you're being asked basically because i made the mistake of like not reading properly i've done this in numerous practice interviews and i think i even did it once in a real thing and they had to stop me and be like um read the card carefully so guys please read the card carefully find out what you're being asked so the okay. other station you can encounter and you probably will is the professional judgment station these kind of stations basically assess your judgment skills in healthcare situations and sometimes not even in healthcare situations just in general and um, they often touch on themes of morality and ethics and kind of what's right what's wrong and what's the best course of action for example you might get a situation where it's like okay you're a junior doctor one of the consultants has a big surgery coming up and you see him maybe taking some kind of drug or substance through his nose what do you do so in these kind of situations i basically want to see how far you'll go with your morality and with what's ethically right but also how you would handle it this kind of station is kind of tricky because you know they don't want you to be like oh yeah i'm gonna call the police on him like do you know what i mean the best course of action in my opinion would be to confront the doctor or the consultant and let him know what you've seen that you don't think it's a good idea for him to go through with the operation that he has scheduled maybe try and organize a different consultant for it let another member of staff know if you're really concerned just in general to try and keep like the volume down so as not to disturb or frighten other patients that may be on your ward in that kind of situation you're always putting the patient first that is the number one thing i would say to keep in your head when you're going through situational judgment the patient always comes first patient safety patient safety patient safety how safe are your patients? How comfortable are your patients? That's what's most important, okay? Doesn't matter if it's your consultant, you know, if it's your damn dog, like patient safety should come first as your role as a doctor. You have a responsibility towards your patients. At the same time, they also want to test your empathy. Obviously, you know, don't be a mm, about it. I'm asking, is everything okay at home? You know, how long have you been doing this for? This isn't like you. The best course of action would usually be to pull someone aside. Say you had a friend in school. They've got a sweet wrapper stuck on the back of their shirt. You know, you're not going to go into a crowd. You like to pull them to the side. Hey, you know, you've got something on the back of your shirt. And you're going to do it that way just to kind of preserve their decency. They might feel embarrassed. Do you know what I mean? So that way you're showing and displaying empathy. You understand how they feel. And you're letting them know that through your actions and through your words. For that station, that is what I have to recommend. Patient safety your sensitivity and empathy and your ability to make conversation and act in an appropriate manner according to the situation. So now we're on to the third station that tends to come up and that is prioritization stations. This can take the form of something as, I don't know, you have a limited amount of oxygen, which actually did happen during peak COVID-19 levels um, over the winter. Doctors did have to make decisions over who would get oxygen and who would not. So they want to test your priorities prioritization skills in these kind of stations sometimes it's not really a like right answer it's more about how you got to your answer um so as i said it could be something like who gets oxygen um a mother with four kids that's also a smoker or i don't know a 10 year old boy that has leukemia so they'll ask you to prioritize what they want to see is your rational thinking this is the kind of station that i would recommend that you think out loud it's like drawing a mind map of your words like they want to see how you got there they want to hear what's in your head and you can say um so on the mother's side you know she has children um but if she has a partner that would be there to take care of the children if she passed away how long has she had this illness for and then for the boy you can say oh but on the other hand he's a child he's of a young age etc 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 and it's just like how did you get there they want to know how did you get to that answer there's not always a right answer you know you have two people's lives in your hands it's not like, oh, the answer is A or B. 
The answer is, how did you get to A or how did you get to B? That's what they're interested in. It also tests your ability to think on your feet because it might always be time to like, you know, sit down and ponder. On the other hand, you could be asked a completely arbitrary question like, oh, you're on a desert island, you can only bring five things, what would you bring? Now, they don't really care so much about what the five items would be, as long as you have a rational reason for the four items. So again, this whole prioritization station is testing the main skills of rational thinking, thinking on your feet and being able to keep your cool just trying to panic speak slowly you know explain your thoughts let it flow any answer can be correct with a reason most of the time so the more like different kind of station that could pop up is the instruction stations these are stations where basically you'll be asked something like i'm an alien from space so i'm just come from an alien planet here's a shoe teach me how to tie shoes without touching me or gesturing these kind of stations are solely to test your communication skills, how good you are at giving instructions, um, being clear and concise, and more importantly, if you get frustrated in the process. So, for example, let's work through to teach someone how to tie your shoes. You'd be like, okay, first you get the two laces, they'll be like, what's a shoelace? And you have to explain what a shoelace is. Cool, they know what a shoelace is. Make a knot. What's a knot? Because they're an alien from outer space, so you have to just assume they don't know anything. They want to see if you're patient enough to convey instructions in a clear manner. Someone that wouldn't know. These kind of stations are really, really useful for the interviews because nobody likes a doctor that gets annoyed when you ask questions about your own health. Same thing with teachers. Nobody likes a teacher that you don't understand something and you ask them to explain it again and they get annoyed. They just make poor teachers. Same way that would make a poor doctor. My tips for this station would just be to be as concise and clear as possible. You know, if someone says I don't understand and they keep saying it, just be like, okay, let's go from the beginning. Always check in with the patient or whoever you're explaining it to the interviewer. Okay, have you done that bit? Do you understand? Is everything clear? Is there anything you're confused about? Are you ready to move on? Go at their pace. Because you already know how to tie your shoelace. It's about them and conveying that information. These stations usually aren't too bad. Just be calm, you know, be kind, be patient. Don't get irritated and you'll probably be fine. It's one of the less challenging stations. If you're like the majority of med students and you took maths as your third A level, you're gonna love this station. Or if you're a chemistry fan, you have calculation and data interpretation. So you could be given a question that's like, oh, this medication is 0.5 grams per kg. Your patient weighs this much. Or they might give your patient's weight in um, pounds, then ask you to convert pounds to kilograms and then use that to work out how much of the medication you're going to administer. This is so key. Can you recognize when something looks wrong? You know, machines, things can go wrong. People can put in the wrong numbers. Can you recognize when things don't look like they make sense? So you need to be able to work that out quickly in your head. And this is a skill you'll develop in medical school, but it's also a skill that you should have now. Especially doing A-level chemistry, A-level maths, or to be honest, I did A-level physics and I also found it really helped me. Usually they give you a practice stream and maybe there'll be like five or six questions. Just try to complete as many questions as you can in the time frame. If you're not sure about something, don't spend too long on it, move on. Then you can go back towards the end of your five or ten minutes that you'll have at this station. Usually this is one of the stations where there's not anybody else actually there. Um, and something else that you have to keep in mind, you won't always have a calculator, okay? So you work on your mental maths, do loads of practice. This is testing your chemistry and like mental math skills. The other type of question you might encounter at this station is data interpretation. They'll basically give you a barrage of data and ask you, what does this mean? This could be linked to any biology or chemistry or interpret this or this blood glucose or something like that. Basically, be prepared for everything. Make sure you're paying attention in your A-level classes as you should, as you should. But yeah, they'll basically give you a graph, a sheet. Same way in biology, you'll get questions. What does this show? What does this mean? Or pinpoint this, or work out this. Those are the kind of questions that you'll encounter. There are three parts of being a doctor that always say, the scientist, the clinician, and the teacher. This is testing the scientist, okay? But yeah, so the final unofficial station I wanna talk about is medical hot topics. This is the kind of station where it's kind of difficult to prepare for, but there are a few tips that I'll give you. Number one, read the damn medical news, okay? Journals, articles, whatever. Um, I know on BBC there's a tab that has like medical or NHS and stuff. Read, 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 you know what's going on, you know, know what's coming next. Um, are you working on any new technologies? Um, that is the structure of the NHS changing and evolving. Because you could be asked that. And if they ask that and you've got no clue, you're gonna look like BB the Four, okay? <laughs> you're gonna be sat there like, huh? 
the NHS is what? Like, it's gonna look bad. It's gonna show that you have a disinterest in the field that you're actually going into. They could also ask you questions about NHS values or things of that nature. They could even ask you questions about nurses. You need to know all the different institutions. The main institutions that I will give you guys go away and research. The GMC, which is the General Medical Council, NICE, which is the National Institute for Clinical Excellence, and the CQC, which is the Care Quality Commission. So those are the three big kind of um, organization that you should know about I find loads of videos i'm um, explaining basically how these governing bodies work and the different roles are kind of delegated in hospitals um something else that you really need to know i think i've already mentioned the medical practice by the gmc is the nhs constitution please 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 please, please guys make sure you know about the nhs constitution okay i know it sounds boring but if you're serious about going into the medical field or healthcare, whether you're a doctor, nurse, anything, you need to know about the NHS constitution. I'm not going to go into too much detail because I feel like that's something I should put in a different video. But just have a read, you know, get to know. And to be quite honest with you, you should know all of the values off by heart. They might ask you a question like, what's the most important value? If you say I can't name a value, you're going to look like BB the Fool, okay? You're going to look at your so i'll briefly go over them working together for patients respect and dignity commitment to quality of care compassion improving lives and everybody counts please research them you could be asked them okay they'll just throw it at you and you'll be stuttering and stammering but guys just to end this video i just wanted to say if you don't know something remember what i said far back to yes far back to good medical practice okay i think i haven't heard of that um, new technology or something i'll research that once i get home or do you know what i mean just show that you're an active learner don't just sit there like bread i don't know i don't know like they don't want to see that apart from that guys honestly look forward to your interviews practice as much as you can a lot of um universities do run free practice sometimes they have medical societies and they'll run like free interview practice so make sure you take a look don't stress okay you are an asset to the medical school somebody told me that once for my interview and it really motivated me and helped me get through you are going to be a fantastic doctor you just need to showcase that side of yourself to this medical school aside from that good luck guys and everyone that's had an interview or is going to have their interview here in my next youtube video hopefully i'll be talking a bit about ucat and how to get a good score basically and how to know what is a good score Thank you for watching as usual. If you enjoyed this content, hit that subscribe button. Um, I'll put it somewhere here. Aside from that, peace. Bye.